In this video, let's talk about packages. The thing is, whenever you have a file, doesn't matter is it a music files or documents or code, we normally put them in a folder, right? And then we create a folder structure as well. In fact, I remember in my college days when we used to store different songs, you know, we used to create different folders. Like, you know, we have a songs folder, then inside that we have rock songs, DJ songs, sad songs, romantic songs. And in fact, in that as well, when you go to sad songs, we can have normal sad songs, ultimate sad songs. Okay, now that's exaggeration, but we do that, right? We create a structure there. In the same way, when you talk about Java project, you will not be creating one or two files, right? It will be having multiple files. Sometime your project can have, let's say, uh, 200 files, 300 files. Okay, maybe most of the time when you have a complex project. Now, how will you put all these files in one folder? You can actually, you can put everything in one folder. Now, if you see our project structure here, what we did is we have this folder called codes and in this codes, we have all the files. In fact, we only have three files now, but just imagine we have more files. Imagine we have hundred files. It's okay to put them in one folder. But it's always better if you can create a structure where you can have few files in one folder and few files in another folder and then you can have a folder inside a folder. Now normally this type of pattern in, in Java is called packages. Normally you, you store files in a package. So yeah, that's right. The folder is package here. And of course one package can be a part of another package the way you have folders inside a folder. So how do we do that here in Java? So just to make you understand, let's say we have these two files, you know, advanced calculator and calculator. Now these two files are related, right? They both work for the calculator. So it is a good idea to put them in one folder. Now, how will you do that? Uh, you know, you have an option here of creating a new folder. That's one way. Or you can, what you can do is you can just come back on top of your class and say, you can create a package. So the keyword which you use to create a package is called package. And you can put this class in that particular package. Let's say the package name is tools. Right. So of course you can create any pack, any package name, but it should have an, it should make some sense. So you can see, I'm, I'm saying that they are tools. Okay. And the thing is, you can see, we are getting an error. It says that declare package tools does not match the expected package. The thing is you don't have calc inside the package. In fact, most of the IDs will give you an option of directly, if I click on quick fix. Yeah. So you can see most of the IDs doesn't matter which ID you're using in VS code. We have this option in most of the famous ID, you will get this option of doing something, some red, red symbol or something like that. Here we have an option of quick fix. If I click on that, it says move calc.java to package tools. Okay. That is a good idea. Uh, we can click on this and you can see it created a folder called tools. And now we can actually move this to tools as well. The only thing is when you do that and when you go to this particular class, okay, it has already done the changes. You can see I have not written this. It is already there thanks to VS code and the IDE. Uh, so basically you get this here. So it's always a good idea to put your classes in a package. You can create a complex structure. If you want, you can create a uh, one more folder here. Let's say we got a folder called database or maybe DB connections or DB classes. Or maybe you can see simply say DB. Now this DB will have all the database connections. So let's say if you want to create some files which will connect with MySQL, Oracle, or it does something with database. So you can put all those classes in database folder. Okay. Now that's how you create a project structure here. Okay. The only thing is if you want, if you have this structure here, let's say if you have calc and demo uh, advanced calc, and if you can see both are in a package now, the only problem we will face is if you go to demo and you can see demo is not a part of any package. Normally you put the main class. So the class, which has a main method separately outside the package so that you can easily access other classes. Okay. When I say easily access another classes, can I do that? Can I create object of calc here? So if I say calc obj equal to new calc, which was working earlier, if you remember our, ex our previous examples, it's not working now. You can see it says calc cannot be resolved. What's wrong? The problem is demo and calc, now they are in two different folders. You can't directly access it. Okay, so when I say you cannot directly access it, do we have an indirect way? Uh, yes, we have an indirect way. So what you can do is if you, if you see this bubble, it says import calc. That's right. If you want to use calc in your particular class, you have to say import calc, but then calc belong where calc belongs to 
tools.calc. So basically you have to mention the package name and then you have to mention the class name, whichever you want to import. And now you can see there's no issue. How about advanced calculator? If I want to use advanced calculator obj1 is equal to new advanced calculator, okay, now you cannot access, access this one. You know why? It's because we have only imported calc, not advanced calculator. How will you import this? You're right. Just come back here and say import tools dot advanced calculator. So whichever class you want to use, you can just import them. In fact, Java internally has a lot of classes. Example, let's say one of the classes which we are going to see in future, which is let's say least. Now, when we use least, which is an inbuilt uh, class or inbuilt interface, what is interface, we'll talk about that later. Or maybe at this point, we can talk about, let's say, add a list, which is a class. When we use add a list and when you create object of it, I will say list is equal to new add a list. Now, the moment you do that, it will also come from a package. You can see uh, it is now given by, given by the IDE, it is auto completing it. But if I remove this line, uh, you can see it will give you error. It says add a list cannot be found. So we have to import this one as well. And this belongs to a package. Now that package is import java.util.addylist. This is up to, you have to import. Now you might be thinking why we have two dots here, java.util, how it looks like. So basically we have a Java folder. Inside Java folder, we have a util folder. So the, it's the folder inside the folder. And Java has multiple folders, if you can see java. Uh, we have applet folder, we have awt folder, beans folder, lang folder, io folder, and all these things. So in general, whatever class you use in Java belongs to a package. Let me repeat, whichever class, inbuilt class which you use in Java belongs to a package. Now you'll be saying, okay, everything makes sense, but don't you think string is also a class? And one of our favorite class, which is system. System is also a class, right? So when we are using system, we, are, we have never imported it. So when I say system dot out dot print, then there's, there was no need to import the package. But does system belongs to a package? And the answer is yes. If I go to system and if I go on top here, can you see that? It says package. So this class system class belongs to our package java.lang, but we never imported it. The thing is by default, every Java file will have java.lang by default imported. So even if you don't mention that, it's there. This line is there even if you don't mention. Now the thing is, uh, it's actually this, not this line. What is by default is this, java.lang.star. Now what is this star? Now in one particular folder, if you have multiple files, and if you, if you want all the files, you can simply say star, just like we have tools here. In tools, we only have two files and we are importing both. So can we just do that? Yes, we can. So we can simply put a star here, our job is done. And by doing that, I also removed the list. We don't even need that, ignore that. So basically, if you want to import all the files, you can say star. Okay, uh, so that's how you can create a package in Java. As I mentioned, you can create a folder inside a folder. Example, let's say if I have a folder called other. So let's say we have other folder and this tools actually belongs to others. So now if I move this, you can see we have tools inside other. Now how will it will look like when you talk about your calc? So you can see it says other.calc. So you have to, if you want to go inside the package, normally in folder structure, we use slash. Here we use dot. So it is others.tools.calc. Okay, that's how you have to import it. And of course you can say start, it will import everything. Now my question to you is, if I say import other.star, now is this two line same? Or can I remove this? Of course, right, when you say star, it should import everything. But no, if you can see, it is giving you error. The reason is, when you say others.star, so star simply means all the files not all the folders, okay? So in other, if you have some files, let's say if I create a new file here, I will name this as a.java. The moment you do that, you can see this a class belongs to other package. Now you can easily use a, but not calc. So if you say a obj2 is equal to new a, this will work. It's because you are saying others.start. It will import all the classes, which are all the files in, in, in the other folder, not inside a folder, which is tools. So if you want others, um, I mean tools as well. So you have to mention others.tools.star. So that's how basically you use a package structure. Now there's one thing, you know, not important at this point, but 
since we're talking about package, let's talk about it. Because you will be seeing those type of structure multiple times. When you create a project, a big project, normally you deploy your project on the server somewhere, right? And maybe you are creating a library. That's right. What you do is, when you create a project, it's not always for uh, your use. Sometimes you create libraries so that others can use your files. Now, in this case as well, you will create a package and then you will give your package to others. The only thing is when you are sharing your package to the entire world, it should be unique. It should have a unique name. Let me show you something. I will go to a website. Now, this is one of the website where you can get the libraries. Now, library simply means if you want to do something and if you don't want to write your co the code entirely by, by yourself, you can use some libraries. And most of, most of the time we do that. Example, let's say if I want to connect my application with MongoDB, which is a database. So I can simply search for MongoDB driver sync. This is a driver which we use to connect Java with MongoDB. So you can use this package in your project. Okay, let me select a version. So this is the package, okay? Now the thing is, when you talk about this package, what should be the name of it? So this name should be unique on the internet. Now how will you make something unique? That's tricky point, right? So if, when you are creating a project, how will you make it unique? So one way to do that is by reversing your domain name. That's right. Of course, right, when you're building a library, you will also have your website, your company website maybe. So let's say if we talk about a company like Google. So if I'm working for Google and if I'm creating a library, so what I will do is I will name, I will say this belongs to a package. So if I'm making a project for let's say Google and I'm making a calculator, or advanced calculators, I will say com dot google dot uh, calculation. Now this is my package name. Okay, so by making com dot google, I'm making sure it is unique, right? Only Google can own this domain, right? It's their domain. So that's how you do that. So depending upon your project, you will see this type of uh, packages. In fact, in future videos, we will be using some packages which have com dot something. It means they have just reversed their domain name just to make it unique. But again, for learning purpose, you can name your package anything you want. Example, the way you are, we are doing here, package other, but it should have it should have a meaning. That's important. So yeah, that's about packages. Don't worry, we'll use packages more in the upcoming videos. It will make much more sense.